I want the American people to know that your selfless, inspiring, and valiant efforts are saving countless lives. You are making the difference. The modeling estimates that the peak in death rate is likely to hit in two weeks. So, I'll say it again. The peak, the highest point of death rates, remember this, is likely to hit in two weeks. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. That would be the greatest loss of all. Therefore, the next two weeks and during this period, it's very important that everyone strongly follow the guidelines, have to follow the guidelines that our great Vice President holds up a lot. He's holding that up a lot. He believes in it so strongly. The better you do, the faster this whole nightmare will end. Therefore, we will be extending our guidelines to April 30th to slow the spread. We can expect that by June 1st, we will be well on our way to recovery. We think by June 1st, a lot of great things will be happening. I want every citizen in our country to take heart and confidence in the fact that we have the best medical minds in the world tackling this disease. We have the best science, the best researchers, and the best talent anywhere working night and day to protect your family and loved ones and to overcome this pandemic. With the grace of God, we are rising to the occasion. We are proving that no darkness can overshadow the eternal light of American courage. We will win, and when we do, we will rebound with astonishing force and speed. We will be stronger than ever, and we will have learned so much where something like this can never hurt us to the extent it has and the world again. Queens in New York is the worst infected district in what is now the world's worst infected city, and the doctors and nurses don't know what's hit them. How is it? Hell. Biblical. I kid you not. People come in, they get intubated, they die, the cycle repeats. Are you overwhelmed? Yeah, the, the system's overwhelmed all over the place. My daughter's an intern in Brooklyn, first year resident. She starts the ICU today. I couldn't sleep last night. It, it, it's, it's scary. They are overrun in this hospital, so stretched that an area of the waiting room has been screened off to make a temporary ward. In an internal email, the chief medical officer told staff it was the humanitarian mission of their lifetime. Right now, it's every day. It's non-stop, literally. And uh, unfortunately, it might get to a situation you have to pick and choose what you're going to do, how you're going to do. And as the doctor said, a lot of people come, they're not really survive, they expire, and you put the same machine on another person. And you cannot really even cope with the situation because it's so hard to think about this. And we try to do our, our best. The only thing I ask everyone, I know you guys from England, we live in the States, stay at home if you don't need to go anywhere. Don't try to, to do anything crazy right now. It's a serious pandemic. Every hospital or medical center we go to is flat out. New York, a city no stranger to disaster, could be on the cusp of something it has never experienced before. 9-11 was nothing compared to this. We were open waiting for patients to come who never came. OK, now they just keep coming. And they're all ages. Don't delude yourself into thinking only the old will die or will get it. They're all ages. But like 9-11, it is New York's doctors, nurses, paramedics and first responders who are putting other lives ahead of their own. The number of confirmed cases is going up here by about 5,000 every single day. And they're just about coping. And think this is one of the most advanced medical systems in the world here. But what is becoming quite clear is New York is reaching a tipping point and far sooner than anyone here expected. Queens is where Donald Trump grew up. He's repeatedly described this health crisis as a war. Well, now his hometown is on the front line.